Shalom, Chavari. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and of course, a very serious situation as the Russian warplanes, the Su 160s, along with uh, uh, the Venezuelan fighter F 16 and even Russia Sukhoi fighters flying uh, over the Caribbean Sea for 10 hours. The Caribbean Sea, friends, uh, wow, that just being south of Cuba off the coast of the United States and keeping in mind Russia has cruise missiles on board these planes. No one knows whether or not there are nuclear weapons on board uh, these warheads or not or just conventional weapons. Uh, but the whole issue with the situation with the uh, with this particular type of uh, plane being in the region is clearly sending a message to the United States that they have they are in striking distance of the capital of Washington DC. Uh, looking at the map here on the screen and behind us here, the Caribbean Sea, uh, anywhere they're flying there, they were there for 10 hours in the air flying over the Caribbean Sea uh, inside international waters, but of course with the ability to go 3,500, uh, I think it's 3,500 miles is what their cruise missiles can travel at. Uh, or 3,500 kilometers, not sure exactly which one it is. I just remember seeing that briefly the other day. They can definitely hit the United States. They could easily hit Florida's Orlando uh, and possibly even strike Washington, D.C. with that type of uh, plane in the air. And of course, I've stated before, I believe that this is a situation that is uh, possibly sending a message to D.C. that we do have nuclear-capable bombers in your vicinity in the event that you're trying to provoke Russia into an open conflict with this latest Ukrainian crisis. Russia has beefed up its own border. It has moved in hundreds of tanks to its military base uh, right there near the Ukrainian border. Uh, they also have taken and uh, they have moved in more S-400 systems all in the area, including Kaliningrad up in the northern part of Europe and also Crimea and also on the uh, east side of Ukraine and the Russian border enclave there to protect their borders. This particular article here that was published just recently on, uh, uh, on con uh, conflict, conflictos seguros blogspot, they were actually quoting here, I translated this to English, uh, information on the possible attack by Ukraine on Donbass from People's Republic of Donetsk. Uh, they stated today in an article here that the DPR announced the preparations of a large-scale offensive by the armed forces of Ukraine in the south. Uh, the emergency statement expressed the uh, Edouard Busran uh, was supported by the press conference of the DPR chief Denis Pushlin on December the 11th. As you remember, we reported that to you guys uh, where the commander of the armed forces of the, uh, the DPR, uh, Mr. Busran, actually stating that they're, they're anticipating a large-scale offensive by Ukraine to start on the 14th. Uh, as we went through and looked at the actual statements in this article here, it got really interesting, especially as we go further, because uh, Mr. Pushlin says, it is not just our intelligence reports, but the news from Ukraine tells us, he said directly on it. Uh, so there, they're not just doing this from their own intelligence, but according to the DPR, Ukrainian news is reporting that there is a major offensive about to begin by the Ukrainian government. And there are many that believe that they are trying to draw Russia into an open conflict. In Maripol, uh, where the Ukrainians have moved uh, up to 12,000 uh, men, uh, as well as tanks and other uh, types of armaments, uh, we're also looking at a situation where they're only 18 uh, kilometers from the Russian fighters themselves just on the other side of the border and Russia also has, has brought in a lot of forces. So the tensions are very very uh, serious right now and a lot of issues that are going on there. Uh, moving on into other news as well there were soldiers killed, two soldiers that were killed uh, two more seriously wounded, one with a head wound as a uh, Palestinian gunman from what is being said thus far, opened fire at a bus stop near Givat Asaf. Uh, it says here, two soldiers murdered in the grizzly terror attack identified as Yuval Mor Yosef and Yosef Cohen from Nitzak Yehuda Nahal Haredi Battalion. And uh, very, very much a, just a tragedy to begin with. But, you know, there's one thing that I was wondering as well, because I've seen this over and over and over in Israel. Many soldiers 
uh, could be, especially when they're at a bus stop traveling. Uh, many of them are armed, but there's also many cases where they, where they are unarmed or in the case of their magazines are not allowed to be inside of their weapons. So if they are faced with such an attack like this, they have very little chances of being able to defend themselves very rapidly. So for four soldiers to be taken out that quickly, I have actually submitted a question wanting to know were they armed or were they unarmed? I see this all the time, especially soldiers that are in training. They're in uniform, always on buses, bus stops, hitchhiking, etc. inside of Israel. And that just makes them an open target. And I personally believe that Israel uh, should have their soldiers at least armed with handguns uh, for their own protection if they're going to be in uniform. It's something though that Israel does not uh, do and to me again it just makes more targets and I just really question the the logic of the Israeli government in, in allowing this to actually happen. Uh, again though I have no idea if they were armed or, or, or unarmed. The IDF is not explaining this in this particular uh, a story here they're just talking about the wounds and of course the one girl soldier she is wounded seriously but uh, she's the one that is actually uh, still she's awake she's met with her parents and uh, so she's expected to actually recover uh, from her wounds is from what we can gather right now the head wound though we don't know very serious very serious situation with that one there Maria Bettina uh, Butina pleads guilty to U.S. charge of conspiring to act as a foreign agent. Boy, I can only imagine what this poor girl went through, the threats with uh, every law enforcement agency, CIA, FBI, all of them breathing down this poor girl's neck, even though she came as an, a student to the United States, and they said she did not register as a foreign agent. Do you know how many times that happens in other countries? Do you know how many times that people, when they're traveling, they don't register as a foreign agent? Hey, I know it all too well. Many times. In fact, when we first went to, to Europe, uh, into Prague, my wife being a citizen, I didn't realize I needed to register. Uh, I was there like a month or so before I finally found out that, oh, wow, you're supposed to register with the foreign police as a foreign agent. Yeah, I'd already violated all those laws, but, you know, of course, they know that. You go through it, you get registered, and it's done. But had I been arrested or something or picked up for some crazy bogus thing or maybe drove too fast and got pulled over by the police, you know, they could have put you in jail for that. Well, that's what they're trying to say even with this girl here. Uh, she, they say she was conspiring to act as a foreign agent. Oh, wow, such a, sounds like a mean word. I really just don't believe it. Quite frankly, I believe what they did, especially knowing that CIA, we spy on everybody around the world. And of course, yes, uh, so does the, uh, you know, so does the Kremlin. They have their own KGB agents that are spying all over the world as well. You know. It looks more like to me that what the situation was, they had so many charges trumped up on her that she had a choice, one or the other. You could take the plea and not have to go to trial, get home a lot quicker, or we'll sit here and make your life miserable for the next 50 years here in the United States. And you'll be an old woman by the time you get out and no, Russia's not gonna trade out no spies of ours for you because you're just not valuable enough. That sounds more about what it probably really was. And they also admit that no, she never did actually uh, exchange um, sex for, uh, I forget what they were trying to charge her for that on. They had, finally, the prosecutors admitted that was not true. Again, another fake charge that they do. You know, they just love to do stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I'm sure she'll be deported uh, before long. She could get up to five years in, in prison before being deported. Uh, or she may just get time served and then be deported, which is probably more than likely what's going to happen. I think if they've got all that they can out of her, they'll probably just deport her, uh, especially if she's not really a spy, as they claim that she is. Uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen there? Also, a very strange thing going on. President Trump is doing, boy, yet another one of these moves that really is alarming here. Uh, Trump moves to deport Vietnam War refugees. The White House again wants to expel certain groups of protected immigrants, a reversal after backing away from the policy months ago. You know, to me, that's a shame. 
The United States went over there and devastated this country, all because the Vatican wanted to be able to make sure their agenda was moving far forward in Vietnam. And when Kennedy was trying to get us out of this country, oh no, they had to kill him and keep that war going because Rome had already started that war. And uh, now they want to deport all the refugees that were here before the United States actually made an agreement with the nation. That just sounds criminal, if you ask me. These poor people, their country devastated by the United States, have no idea really why the war went on, although I know a lot about this war. Uh, and maybe I need to do a special on it to where you guys will better understand why I don't appreciate what is going on here. Uh, and, and you just can't but wonder sometimes, though, if these things are not being done intentionally just to stir up the nation over another issue. I think a lot of that has, is what these things have to do with. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll sign out for right now. Listen, I'm going to be doing a teaching on Danoon Institute later today. Uh, about the two witnesses, I ran across an amazing discovery when Yeshua is talking about John the Baptist. And in the Hebrew Matthew, he, when he speaks about, and this is over in uh, Gen excuse me, Matthew 11, verse 14, I believe it is. He says, if you can receive it, he is the Elijah now they put it in King James that is to forecome or speaking, they're, they're kind of implying that it was the Elijah that was promised to forerun Yeshua. Well, you will be amazed at what the Heavenly Father has revealed to me about this, especially from the Hebrew Matthew. Then I went back, did the research in Greek and have seen that they translated it in English based on what they thought the doctrine actually meant instead of what it really says. Yeshua saying that that John the Baptist is the Elijah that is going to come in the future. Wow. You want to talk about knock down all these false doctrines that have been out there trying to say, oh, the two witnesses are, are two groups of people, or it's the Old and New Testament, and every, all that kind of nonsense. But you know what? It's not just that. I got to share with you some more fascinating insights. That'll be on Danoon Institute later today. Uh, so I hope you join me and, and as we discuss this beautiful topic about the two witnesses, their identity. And uh, again, it'll certainly knock down a lot of these doctrines that have been swirling around, that have been started just to try to deflect the truth of what is actually coming. Uh, so I think that'll be a blessing. Also, for those of you that uh, have been trying to watch uh, Yana's presentation on uh, Patreon about the Talmud, uh, we've had several people, a lot of people were able to watch it, several people could not see it. What I did on Vimo, if you go to our, our channel Vimeo, and that's Benun, my last name, B-E-N hyphen N-U-N on Vimo, I'll put a link here in the description below, uh, you can actually click on her video. I made it open to the public where you can see it. And, uh, and also, as far as the other video, I know we had a lot of people didn't like it. They said, uh, you're just doing it to make money. That's totally false. Totally false. This is why on Patreon, those that, that want to come on Patreon, we put it at the very lowest amount Patreon would allow for people to be able to join. It's $1 a month, 25 cents a week is all it is. But you have to understand, Patreon, yes, it does help the ministry. We're wanting to get our website set up with a broad bandwidth to where we can actually run live from our website versus all these other different avenues. But it also gives me the ability to know who, who's actually listening. Because the content there is content that puts our channel at risk. Uh, if they take down Vimo because I have used that as the avenue to load it on Patreon, that's not that big of a deal. I can get another backup to load it on there. But like I said, it's more than what you realize. I realize then there's no secret person coming in in the background watching, gathering evidence that I don't know about. I know who's watching there. And that's a nice thing. There's a lot of things, like I said, we do that a lot of people are not aware of. So at any rate, uh, and I had some people say, you know, well, you could email everybody. Do you realize how many days I'd be just trying to email private links? 
is just got to be reasonable, guys. Really, we got to be reasonable about these things. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, people say you don't, you know, it's not nice to put up teasers. I won't post them anymore at all. I won't post it at all. Uh, if there's something I think that's serious and, and you might want to see it, I'll at least let you know. I'll just simply say we put a new upload on Patreon and then that way there, nobody feels like, oh, they're tempted to go. Um, so we don't load there very often. We load about once a week, um, you know, and that's what we normally do. But it's normally issues that we feel like it puts too much risk, especially Yana's video. Had I posted that on my YouTube channel, it, <laughs> You just don't realize, friends, it's, it's not worth it. We reach a lot of people here on Israeli News Live, and I want to continue to reach the masses, but we're cautious about what we load. And sometimes I get a little bit crazy and I load things anyway there that, you know, could put us at risk as well. But it's a platform we're trying to reach and as cautious as we can, bring things out here to you on Israeli News Live to make you aware about what's going on. But some of these things I want to just say, and I just can't take the risk. Uh, by the way, I am going to release the time that I spent in the CIA by DVD. That was another thing we've been looking at. Should we release that on Patreon? And I am afraid that it, that, again, is going to be just... A, a risk I cannot take there. So we are considering uh, putting that in a DVD format and making that available uh, to you guys. It will not be expensive, but for those of you that want to see it that are not able to make it to the conferences that have wanted to know about uh, the things that, that I covered there, we are going to make that available on DVD. So I can't say exactly when. It's a lot of work, a lot of editing. That's more like a little mini documentary type thing there. Uh, but uh, we hope to do that in the very near future. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate your support for the channel here. Uh, those of you that want to visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, you can do so. You can support there, or right at the bottom of the screen here is our address that you can mail to. Shalom, shalom. In a world that is truly ain't shalom, there is no peace. Erev